Hogstock. Hello, 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 everybody, and welcome to a fun episode of the Hogstock. It's going to be a jam-packed episode. I'm going to start mellow. Because this is going to get more and more energized as we go, guys. It does sound like we're sitting around the campfire or something yes. here, Alex. I'm amazed. Yeah. Considering that do you have your paint- acoustic guitar? Can we do some kumbaya first? Yeah, it's in the closet. <laughs> yeah, I can do I'll go get, no, I'll go get right. my yingling. I'll grab a sun kiss for you on the way out. <laughs> I gave up all soda, Dave, so that's not uh, good. I don't do it well, anymore. Well, you, what, unsweetened tea then or something or what? No, what you I got? really only drink water. You have to yeah. get me a water. It's, I yeah, know yeah. It's, it's boring, but... Steve it, doesn't even like tea. Oh, I love you water, remember. so we're yeah. good with there. Yeah, I got my water right here. This is not like a giant cocktail or anything. It's just water. So I'll go learn some John Denver songs, and we'll, you know, yeah. <laughs> we'll, play, we'll do that instead of talking <laughs> we'll, about We'll football. just do... I said it's going to be a five-hour show. We'll just do four <laughs> hours of singing West Virginia. Oh, God. <laughs> well, just the chorus, too. Just the chorus. Because we have nothing else to talk about today. Then let's just do John Denver songs. Yeah. There you yeah. go. All right. I want to start not with the big news, but l- let's start by just giving our condolences to Ron Rivera. His mother passed away uh, two days ago now. Uh, we're recording this on Wednesday night. Uh, we we had heard that he'd gone to see his mother the week before uh, back in California. Obviously, something was up. Uh, he was making his peace with her, I'm sure, you know, saying his goodbyes. She passed away. So, you know, condolences to him and his family. I've lost my father, what, two years ago? It's, it's rough losing a parent. I, I can't imagine how hectic it's for him doing a stressful job and having to deal with that. Yeah, I yeah. have not lost mine, thankfully, and but uh, I, I certainly can sympathize. So our best wishes. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I, I lost my father. I was stationed overseas. Never got back in time either. So it's rough. Yeah. So. Yeah. I, I. You know what? Having lost people both quickly and not quickly in my life, I'd rather have that chance to say goodbye. It's a lot yeah. easier. So. Uh, sorry for your loss there, Coach Rivera, and you know. It doesn't get better, but you do get used to it. That, that's all I'll say. All right, now let's change gears. Uh, sound the horns of war. Dan Snyder, the big news broke, what, 10-ish today in Forbes. Forbes is headline. Dan Snyder's hiring Bank of America to sell the team. I learned no, this from a like a screaming loud text message from Alex in the middle of the day. All caps, <laughs> like eight messages in a row. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Dan Snyder! Oh my god! It's like you guys understand, I'm trying to practice law here, right? I mean, <laughs> no, you don't. No, you don't. Yeah, yeah, but I know and you're I'm not. Yeah, working. and I'm just sitting at work thinking this is just, it's just a horrible prank that Alex wants to play <laughs> in the middle of the day. <laughs> I mean, I, I literally saw it like 20 seconds after Forbes posted it. It did look like a drunk text from you, Alex. I got to be honest. Yeah, but I don't day drink on a work day. I, I, that's why I was surprised. <laughs> it's like, is he home? Do you take a day off maybe? I mean. No, no, no. And I would never joke about this. This is too good to not joke about. It's too important. So why don't we tell people what has exactly happened in case they have yeah, not seen Yeah, yeah, I don't. Do you have the press release up? Okay, the, yeah. Because okay. the team – this is put out my a press job. release a minute after the Forbes article. So, yeah, so obviously, this is always my job. So here's what happened. Let, yeah. me, let me let me pre-brief this. So right. Forbes puts out an article that says Dan Snyder's going to sell the team. Okay. Right. And so specifically, you want to know specifically what the Forbes article said is our Kurt, our buddy um, Chris sent Chris, it to yeah. me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he has a Forbes, I think. Yeah, I tried. Or too cheap. In, in the headline, I couldn't read it because, yeah, we don't have it and, yeah, we can't afford it. Yeah. Um, but the Forbes headline said something like, I can't pull it up here after all. Dan Snyder retains Bank of America to sell the team. Right. Okay, and so the team then puts out a press release, which I do have in front of me, that says, Washington Commanders, Washington C words. Yeah. Hire Bank of America Securities to consider potential transactions. And I'm going to read this since it's short. Dan and Tanya Snyder of the Washington Sea Words announced today that they have hired B of A Securities to consider potential transactions. The Snyders remain committed to the team, all of its employees, and its countless fans uh, uh, to putting 
the best product on the field and continuing the works to set the gold standard for workplace in the NFL. Mm -hmm. Um, It's kind of strangely worded, but, and it really does say C words, not commanders. So the, the buzzword in all seriousness is to consider potential transactions. Right. Okay. And so then after that, um, a couple hours later, ESPN then releases a story that says the U.S. Attorney's Office in the Eastern District of Virginia has an open criminal investigation against the team, which right. stems from a letter coming from the House Oversight Committee, which is the congressional committee that's had this right. investigation. The hearings, yep. Yeah, and so that letter, the allegations in the letter stems from Jason Friedman's testimony. Friedman's testimony... Friedman was a guy who said they were cooking the books, who said right. that there were two sets of financial records and they were hiding money, putting money on a Kenny Chesney concert that's supposed to be under under uh, the, a football game, right. which goes to the NFL, says that they were he said they were uh, the letter alleged and Friedman's alleged that they were they had held on to deposits and a number of other things. And so that is supposedly what's being investigated and the final thing I'll say here to all this is that the team spokesman had nothing to say, but the ESPN article quotes uh, John Brownlee, who was the guy who wrote that letter. One of the guys who wrote right. the letter I went over in detail a few weeks ago on IJB, and he denied it all. So that is what has happened all today, Wednesday. Well, that's some, but not even all, because here's some other things that have come out uh, this okay. <laughs> on this crazy, crazy day. ESPN, uh, Judy Batista was on ESPN. She's a columnist, insider, came out and said uh, in her talks with the rest of the league, it sounds like they had the 24 votes to vote Dan Snyder out. So that just came out a few hours ago. You had uh, multiple reports from guys like Schefter saying uh, this does not sound like it's a sell for a minority owner because we had this discussion offline right away, it Steve. Could be. I, it I don't... could be them looking for more money for a stadium, for a minority owner, something like that. Uh, Schefter saying it sounds like it's a full sale. The Forbes article even says that there are four potential bids already more or less oh, in place. Oh, uh, look, here's which a couple is not things. surprising to me. Well, yeah. a couple of things about that. Number one, Adam Schefter is a reporter, not a business guy. Sure. And it's certainly a, a definitive statement would be Dan and Tonda Snyder have elected to sell the team and proceed to find a buyer. That's not what it said. Right. Um, it also wasn't a definitive statement saying we're looking for minority ownership. No, it didn't. It Notice it just said consider right. potential transactions. Right. They are being potentially, intentionally obtuse because I think the truth of the matter is – they are considering everything. I think he's con- considering selling the team. I think he may be considering trying to find uh, some minority p- partners who would both help him in PR probably and and financial. I went over the stadium stuff a couple weeks right. ago. You know, he needs an equity injection at a minimum, you know, right. which is cash. He, he needs someone to give him a billion dollars for that or something. Yeah, you know? probably. Realistic, maybe not that much, but yes, <laughs> something Close along those lines. Yeah. Um, and so I don't think – it's definitive, and I don't think Adam Schefter necessarily knows what he's talking about. Um, he's a reporter, right? Not a business guy. So I just, I, I think it's critical to remember that. I mean, everybody's rooting for it. Nobody, you know, hopes for the more bad to happen to this guy than me. But I just don't want anybody to get out ahead of their skis just yet. Maybe it is, and then we'll all have a party. But yeah, it's not something that's set in stone just because, you know, the way the story's read. No, I, well, I think look, uh, we're hedging our bets. Well, I, th- well, I think for one, for the minority uh, purchase aspect, I, yeah, I think who in their right mind wants to one align themselves with Dan Snyder as being a minority owner, and even if no matter who you get as a minority owner, I think these uh, these, these uh, states, uh, Virginia and all them, they're they're still going to have kickback by the politicians because Dan's still the face of that organization. Yeah, you know, I, I think they'll still end up having a problem with stadiums and so forth, and they're going to continuously have issues like uh, with uh, Sally Jenkins from Washington Post and so forth. They're always going to have something there. What minority owner wants to be a part of all of that mess? Well, you know what I mean? In my yeah. in my opinion. No, I mean you're not wrong. It's certainly the pool is more limited, but yeah, I mean at the end of the day, money talks, and um, the NFL is this 
close to a sure thing for an investment for super rich people as mm-hmm. there is. It's literally almost impossible to lose money in, in an NFL team. Really right. is. I, just the media contracts alone. Yeah, and Washington's as mismanaged a team as there is, and they're still making a ton of money. You know, so there's people out there who do care less. And and listen, I think Dan Snyder seems to have an amazing talent for talking people into coming to work with him. I don't totally understand how he does that, because um, he's gotten a bunch of good people. He runs them off, granted, but right, he's done it before. So I don't necessarily think. And here's the other thing that's going through my head: if this is a real criminal investigation. And it may may not be. It may just be that the U.S. attorney got a letter and has a right. file and is not doing anything with it. But, but if there's a real criminal investigation, I think that is your biggest impediment to a sale. Because it, just because Dan Snyder leaves does not mean an investigation ends. If the no. team as an organization, as a business entity, has committed crimes like laund- money laundering or you know whatever they're investigating – that ex- continues to exist, and a new owner would have to deal with it. So I think it depresses the value of the team unless more is known about that. Yeah, it, I, I was going to say that myself if we wanted to talk about that part. It Absolutely. Just, yeah, yeah. The It doesn't follow Dan. If Dan sells, he basically gets out of that situation. You know, he might have to testify. He might be in a little trouble, but unless he's done committed per, there's uh, you know there's allegations yeah. of personal misconduct by him, right. and uh, you know who knows. Right, but he it would basically be him skipping away. <laughs> like, yeah, and so it's kind of like yeah. it's kind of like trading William Jackson. By the way, the team trade we're not going to probably get to this, but the team traded William Jackson for a bag of chips. Right, this week. a twenty twenty five draft swap. Yeah, it's literally it like a like a like a like a one serving size bag of Doritos. Right, and, I, and I the expiration it, date is. I think the, the I think the no, it was you're swapping picks either six for six. Or six no, it's, for seven. No, it was depending on what's worse. Yeah, it's a contingent yeah. thing. But yeah. point is, that is think of the William Jackson trade as the value of the Washington franchise with a major criminal investigation hanging over it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's not yeah. The, again. We don't know if is this one story in the media. We don't know what it is. But if it right. is a real criminal investigation, that is a problem because Danny may not want to sell at a discount. No. Maybe now, uh, can ride it out. Now, what if it's a situation? Because it's uh, well, holding. Uh, uh, he he was uh, running two books, and it's pretty much something that it would affect the other NFL owners, right? So maybe it's something where they have enough. They, they may have enough owners. Maybe that, that they do want to vote him out, and maybe they sat Dan down and said, "Well, listen, if you just go ahead and agree to sell the team." We'll let you just ride off in the sunset, and we will drop any potential charges. I've been saying that for two of years. Of doing Dave. something yeah. like that, we so I, I maybe totally agree with you. That might be it. It yeah. could be that, uh, you know. And that again, I've been saying that forever. Uh, you know, it's like an intervention. It's basically this is Richard Nixon. I used mm-hmm. this Watergate as example. I think an IJB last time. Maybe it was here. I can't remember, but no, it was it, IJB. Okay, so Watergate. For those of you who are too young to remember, and I'm too young to have lived through this too, but. So after the Watergate break in, Richard Nixon hired a group called the Plumbers, which is his like criminal fix it people to go break right. into the Democratic Party headquarters in the Watergate building and steal a bunch of records and just be criminals. And then he denied it, blah, blah, blah. And it went on and on and on. And then eventually um, he got impeached and they had the votes in the mm-hmm. Senate and they went to Nixon and said, we have the votes. And that's when he resigned. Yeah, that is my that is what Dave is describing and what I have previously des- described could have happened. Now, granted, we are also talking about a time in history when people, you know, actually had things like dignity and tried to preserve their, you know, respectability. I don't know a little if I bit. would put dignity and Richard Nixon in the same Maybe. sentence, but <laughs> he had something like something that resembled that where, oh, I don't want to be, you know, this president who got impeached. Let me do something and, you know, just have yeah, I mean, safe uh, face. Little Danny may maybe he'll he'll want to fight to right. the end, but it doesn't what? sound like he is. I mean, I, I, just, I don't think that culture really exists anymore with society. Of, I don't I also be think that this press release would have come out at all if the Forbes story hadn't come out. Oh, they, they were timed to come out together, obviously. Well, yeah, I mean. If Forbes had not run the story, I don't think the PR, the press release would have happened at all, meaning we wouldn't have known about this. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. I, I, the, the only question would be, 
was the Forbes thing in tandem with Bank of America or in tandem with something they heard from the commanders themselves, you know? Well, uh, maybe it could be sources. You know, yeah, yeah, knows? yeah. But your sources are going to come from one of two areas. You know what I mean? Maybe. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it could have been the janitor overheard something. Who knows? Right. I, I, yeah, maybe. Uh, I'm, I'm sure it looks good for Bank of America to be like, we're about to help facilitate a three billion or uh, five to six billion yeah, dollar five. sale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that, that looks good for our balance sheet, right? <laughs> but I can't emphasize enough. Yeah. I mean, don't jump to conclusions, folks. Right, right, right. We don't know that this is it. No, 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 no. I, but I'm just saying, like, it, it could have come from Bank of America for that reason. Could've. Um. All right. So some other stuff we got to unpack. Uh, like we said initially, there were f- rumors are there are already four people potentially lined up. Now, I've heard two things about this. One, the reason there's already these this many people lined up, uh, we just saw the Broncos get sold. So we know who wants to buy an NFL team. And generally speaking, people who want to buy NFL teams, it's not like it used to be where I want to buy my home team. It's I'm just going to buy one. Because, well, the NFL has a list, okay? Yeah, yeah. They, they have, have a, a list, list of yeah, they all a lot of how you get in partly is uh you're a minority owner already and that's right. kind of step 1 to get into the party, you know. And so and the NFL has a list, you has a list of right. people kind of an un, a desk drawer list if you will. So it wouldn't surprise me if the whole thing is a, let's assume the best and assume the best case scenario Danny's leaving, yay. And as soon as the NFL finds out about that, they make three or four calls. They have buyers lined up immediately. Yeah. It, you know, that's – it's not – we're not putting an ad in Craigslist here, you know. Right. No, no, no. Um, so there, there's two names that I've already seen that are supposedly on okay. the list. Alex Obviously, one is Be- Bezos because yeah. he apparently tried to buy the team in 2021. Uh, which I didn't know that he had put in an offer. I don't think it was for sale, but he I didn't apparently hear that was interested today then. I've yeah, never I, heard I that, that before this moment. Yeah. Neither did I. Uh, I just saw it written in one of these many, many articles that I read today. Mm-hmm. Um, the other name is the owner of the 76ers, who apparently put in a bid to buy the Denver Broncos at one point, and it was willing to go up to $5 billion for the Broncos, uh, who was Josh Harris. Uh I don't know so anything that, about him. Yeah, I don't know much about him either. I I, I was wondering if Dave might, because you know he's up in that area. Uh, but you know, I was about to do some very I, fast research on him, see yeah. what I could find out. I don't I don't know a great deal mm-hmm. about him to be honest. Um, but uh, they, okay, they I generally so, have been a pretty good outfit. I, I know that. <laughs> so, <laughs> according to Wikipedia, which is always right. Yes. Right. Joshua Harris, born 1965, is a billionaire American private equity investor and philanthropist, founded mm-hmm. Apollo Global Management, which is one of the world's largest alternative investment firms. Mm-hmm. And alternative investment firms usually means they have like an agenda, you know, it's like an environmental agenda or something. Sure. That's usually what that means. Okay, so he's shock of shocks, private equity. Yeah, I, I, aren't all these guys now private equity guys? Like, a lot of them are, yeah. Yeah, like yeah, that's where everyone's making the, these billions of dollars. Is and they don't actually, those, they've never done anything. They just invest. I continue to think that the fan, local fan base, local media is all hyped up on Bezos simply because they can name him. And sure. They know his name. I, I mean, of course. That that's why people, you know, generally do this. I just think he's a front runner because I I just think the NFL wants him. In the NFL, I, I so, think and that's a big when, part of it, yeah, yeah, and and what better market to put him into and than DC? Yeah, he's, you know, he's I mean, already, he already's got a house here. He owns the post. He's building his headquarters here. It, it would make a lot of sense. The the other wild parts that I saw written about this, the lack of the stadium deal, really, of course, is the nail in the coffin on the owner side. Um, this. I don't think it's been said by anyone in like any of the political circles, but it's kind of understood that if Snyder's gone, everything opens back up for a stadium deal in in all the areas. RFK comes back into play. RFK is not in play. It never I'm was just in play. I'm telling you what I've it, seen people write. They're they're wrong. RFK isn't in play. Wasn't in play. Isn't going to be in play realistically. They, the NFL's the, dream is. It doesn't of matter what the NFL's dream is. The NFL. 
the RFK property is owned by the federal government right. and is leased to D.C. with a lease that is going to expire, it would take an act of Congress to do something. What, what, is the lease still expiring or did that change? Yes. Yet? No, the lease is – it was – I forget. 2029, when, I know. Something like that. Yeah, yeah, it's I wouldn't swear under the date, but the it has a lease that's expiring and it would take the federal government to act. Right. I understand. It's just all that. not realistic. It's not and the residents don't want it. There's people well, need no to one, give up the dream about RFK. No one wants a stadium in their in their hometown. That that's just how it is. People need I'm oh, just well, telling wasn't you, there an area in a metro metro area you talked about before Alex that it was uh Available, not large enough plot of land. It was it's unused now and so forth. Or is that somewhere else? Uh, in the city itself, there's really only Poplar Point, which is just barely big enough for the stadium they were talking about. How 55, many acres 000. is it? I don't know exactly how many acres. It's right across the river from Nats Park, but it's still federal land. It's you know, it's a national park technically. Uh, you could just barely squeeze something the size of RFK there. Because the federal government is always willing to. Yeah, exactly. turned a national park into <laughs> well, the, the plan was actually to t- sell that anyway at one point and build a soccer stadium there, and then they changed their mind and put it on the other side of the river, close to Nats Park. But well, we're getting we're getting yeah. off the track here. So the point <laughs> yeah, is, but, yeah. Alex is right. It's I the would assume opens that up anyway, yeah. if there was a new owner. Mm-hmm. then a bunch of options would open. And I told you before, I've done, I do real estate deals every day. Right. And sometimes deals just die. And you can just tell they're dying and it's just not going to happen. And that's what the stadium thing felt like this off season. It just was dying and that was it. All of yeah. that would be resurrected with a new owner, I think, for sure. Uh, the, the question or the wild card becomes, because the crux of the thing I was reading wasn't so much about the RFK site. It's what well, the NFL really wants is a stadium in the nation's capital to start hosting a bunch of Super Bowls because they think that would be a hedge, like, kind of like what they were doing in LA. They just want to host Super Bowl after Super Bowl in these big money markets to, you know, it helps their bottom My line. My thought it makes would them be to good. tear down the congressional office buildings and put it there. Too small. Not enough. La- <laughs> there's actually not enough land there. <laughs> oh, you think? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I do. So you took me seriously, apparently. Yeah. You could tear down. The, those and like eight city blocks that power plant and that might be enough. <laughs> well, we need the power plant. What it'd be, it'd be a Congress. good repurpose it's of the land. Active. It's it's just sitting there. We don't need Congress. <laughs> we we do need a power plant. <laughs> uh, yeah, but yeah, th- there really isn't many spaces to put one close to the city anyway. But let's get, get back that. to Snyder. We can ramble yeah. about this all day. Yeah, yeah. But if the team is wanting that. Not only do you need then a guy who's got five to six billion dollars to buy the team, you're probably talking about someone who needs double that to build a stadium complex, right, Steve? No, I mean, no. So, um, sorry, I'm having to yeah. text my father. <laughs> um, no, so this is how major commercial construction works. Um, you don't just, you know, poop out two billion dollars. There's construction financing, usually through a team of banks. Right. And in the case of an NFL stadium, it'll be a pot of money from the government, probably the state government raised by mm-hmm. bonds or something else. Um, and then the lender, the senior commercial lenders will require the ownership group to put inject some equity in the deal, meaning cash. And this is what I was saying earlier about they need – an equity injection of, you know, 10%, 15, 20%, something like that. Mm -hmm. Um, But the rest of it is finance. And so it's construction financing, you know, basically they're paying interest during the term of the construction. And then when the thing is built, then it turns to what's called permanent financing. And then that's finance over 30 years. And that is why these teams have 30 year leases. It's because it matches up with the construction finance. So no, you don't need to literally have all this money in your savings account. You just need to be able to get credit, and the credit for this kind of thing is is based on a combination of the strength of the developer and his experience. Dan has mm-hmm. no experience in this, and the financial projections for the development. So it's not just like, hey, I have a bunch of cash. But still, I'm, they need more than just the money to pay Dan. They, they, they need do someone need who knows something. what they're doing is right. the principal problem. I mean, Dan isn't a real estate developer at all. 
No, no, no. I, I realize that. I think uh, it does make you wonder how someone like this Josh Harris guy, who's just an equity guy, I guess that probably is better than whatever Dan's background was telemarketing. Well, he's at least a business guy. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Dan isn't really an effective businessman, in case anybody hasn't noticed. No, no, I didn't notice. That. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but yeah, so the the reason that name came up that I saw uh, was uh, some speculation that Dan might not want to sell to a guy like Jeff Bezos for personal grudge reasons. Uh, and we all know, or I think there's always been some speculation that Bezos has been secretly behind this secret cabal that the team t was talking what? about the other. Yeah. You know, how the oh, team, yeah. I mean, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So the team, what was it? Uh, Alex the Jones weekend? stand front and center. Yeah. 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 The, the team mean, put just... out something at what, through one of their lawyers saying there's a secret cabal. Yeah. Uh, but that's been after now Dan Bezos Snyder. in the middle of that. I mean, they, they, I, I uh, he's been in the middle of that for over a year so. now. Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. I mean, who who comes up with garbage like this? I mean, there's no evidence of it. He's never made a single statement. No, he has nothing to do with the NFL at all. And I got now, an argument Jeff Bezos, with... don't you people think that if Bezos wanted to buy a team, he would just blow him out of the water and offer like ten billion? Right. I think, really wanted I think to have a team. I think I think people had that impression because well, I think he bought the uh, Washington Post and what like like just before or just after the retirement of the name. And he ran and he no, ran he, a he series of bought it like three years before the name changed. He, oh, okay. He's owned it okay. for a long time. But yeah. uh, but during that whole process with uh, you know, with, with the retirement of the name and scandals came out. Yeah. I mean, the post was like front and foremost with almost every single bit of information, and I mean, everything was just nothing but a smear, I guess you would say, against Dan Snyder. So people looked at it. Well, hey, Bezos always wanted to be in the NFL. He's mm -hmm. he wants Washington, you know, and he has, you know, and the NFL wants him there. So, hey, it makes sense that he's trying to run a smear camp. So this that's how a, they piece it together. This that's is why I, I people need to put Twitter down. OK, <laughs> seriously. Well, so there, Jeff there Bezos are, is worth, what, 40 billion? Uh, something I, like that, maybe more, more that, now yeah. than that. Yeah, I, think, I think closer to 100, I thought. But he's certainly yeah. top two or th maybe three or four richest people in the world. Yeah. Jeff Bezos does not need to go through this level of subterfuge. No, no, no. He does. He would have no. just offered $7 billion to buy the Broncos and, yeah. blow, again, blown everybody out of the water, and it would have been over, and he would have written uh, a check for th it. There are other parts of this that I think there is a grudge because uh, all these places Dan Snyder initially wanted to build a stadium. Uh, and no one wanted him. All those municipalities and even some of the exact locations, they were trying to offer to Jeff Bezos for the Amazon headquarters. They were trying to offer him the RFK property for an Amazon headquarters at one point. They were trying to offer him all this land in Virginia closer to the city to build headquarters. And that's where it ended up. It ended up in Crystal City right by the Pentagon. And uh, you know how petty Dan can be, so he probably took yeah, that as a personal thing I'm against sure. Bezos. He might, he may well. Uh, have. This is conspiracy theory. Again, yeah. Alex Jones well, needs sure. to write yeah. this stuff up. Well, so and I'll give you a funny example of the Alex Jones level. I was arguing with somebody about this on Twitter. I'm not even mention the name. No, let's it, mention the name. I, I I'd have to look him up. Uh, that's <laughs> the only reason I was gonna mention. If, okay, that. if it's just yeah. dumb, I want to identify the person. Uh, it, it was a very dumb little argument, and I'd have to scroll way back in my comments. Uh, All right, but fine, yeah, yeah. So Ooh. I was arguing with this guy and he's one of these, oh, it's all, it's all Jeff Bezos. It's all Jeff Bezos, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, well, Jeff Bezos is giving money to all the politicians who've been coming after Dan Snyder. I'm like, really? You, you think that? And he's like, oh, I know it. And I'm like, you, you know it for a fact. He's like, yeah. And I'm like, all right, let me, let me just look up who Jeff Bezos is giving up money to. Probably gives and money it, to everybody would be my he, guess. No, he does. He he just he gives it to a lot of the political action committee type things, yeah. you know, for the DNC, RNC packs. But he has given no money to any of these people who are on the committees going after Dan Snyder or anything. OK, but if he, he's given them the packs, I mean, you could kind of indirectly say that. Sure. But sure, the but point is he's that not means going he's also giving it to the RNC who's I know, not coming after guys, him. Guys, guys, Bezos no doubt is left leaning for sure, and it's what he's at least what he said publicly about his beliefs. But I can I would bet my life that he's giving money to everybody in one oh, way or absolutely. shape or form. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and and again, at these people, it's like Bezos doesn't need to go through this. Right. He's right. worth that, how, 
tens of billions of dollars. He doesn't need to do any of this. Yeah, that was that was the point of my like argument. I'm like, one, Jeff Bezos does not need to secretly fund anything to oh. go after Dan Snyder. It's not that hard. The, this this grand cabal that people think is going on, it's really just a bunch of schmucks like us who all hate him anyway. Like uh, there would, might be a group of owners trying to get Dan out. Oh, oh, uh, I mean, I'm I sure there is that. at this point. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Jim Irsay kind of proved that, if anything. Jim you know. Irsay pulled his head out from you know, a pile of coke long enough to mouth right. off about Snyder. <laughs> pulled his head out from coke and said, this man is a real asshole. <laughs> I may be one, but so is he. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just harm myself. He harms everybody. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, I guess we need to talk about the Colts game, too. We do, but to end yes. this segment. Okay. Does Dan sell the entire team and win, Dave? Uh, I think he sells the entire team, and I actually think it happens before the new year. Okay. Where something's Alex. in place. Something's in place by the new when year. When you say new Either year, new league year, or new, like, 2023? I'm sorry, new league year. Okay. New league. And even if it's yeah. so, you don't necessarily think it will be closed, but there will be a deal. I think there will be something firmly okay. in place, uh, yes. Okay, Alex. I do think this ends with him selling the team. I don't know if it'll take, if it can get done that quickly. I I know I saw some reports, uh, again, guys like Schefter saying, if this happens, the NFL will fast track it, which would be great. I'd be very happy. I'm just not that optimistic that it gets fast tracked. Something, there will be some kink along the way, and it probably gets done probably closer to the start of the next season. Uh, But... I mean, Steve, you know, these deals always take a lot longer. Yeah, but you can fast fast track stuff if you want. I mean, that is possible. I mean, again, you just pay a team of very, a very large team of high priced lawyers enough and they can get done anything done quickly. I've been a part of those teams where you're up till all night long for some rich guy. (laughs) It's also the getting the league votes and all that nonsense. Because I I checked on this, even a minority owner has to be voted on by the rest of the league. It is. So, yeah. um, since I brought up, I guess I have to guess too. Um, yeah. It kind of feels like the momentum really is there mm-hmm. this time. Because um, there's a lot of things conspiring against little Danny. So, I'm going to say, and I know I was cautioning against optimism earlier in the show, but I'm going to say this does get the deal done. And I think it's gonna. If it does happen, it'll be sooner than what Dave thinks. I think if it does happen, they will, they'll get it done in a couple months. Okay. So you're you're actually the most optimistic. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. But again, I, I mean, it's just because I made us guess. You know, sure. I, don't th- I just think that seems like the most likely scenario. I just don't want people to assume the Forbes headline is Danny is selling everything because that's right. not you know. And it, it, I will, I'll put it out here again. If and when it does get sold. I don't know how. I don't know who's going to help me. We're we're, we're going to have to have some kind of parade or party in D.C. somewhere. You know, like uh, <laughs> maybe I'll kind fly of... out for it, Alex. It'll be you, me, and Dave marching through the street of nothing. Else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, if I well, do that, I'm wearing Redskins gear, though. That's fine. I, I'll, I'll 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 figure out with permits. That, no problem. There, Dave I'll figure I'll out be... some permits. You know. <laughs> now, I do want to add just two real quick things, though. Okay. One, I think we'd be remiss to not say that. Well, this is all if this happens, it's all going to happen because of money and finances. And that's going to be the reason why this happens. Of course. And the shame of it is, is how all this started with these women, these women coming forth, the toxic workplace. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, this won't be the reason why he he gets forced out or he sells or whatever it is. And so there really isn't going to be closure for these women, because let's be honest. I mean, yeah, he's selling the team. He's gone. He's out. But I mean, but it's not because of the main reason why a lot of this really got forth right. because of how horrible he was for these women creating this work, work environment. And that right there, I feel bad for these women for that, especially the ones who came out against Dan for this, who are brave enough to do all this. And, and for those who want to sit there and say, well, it was all money grab this, that, whatever. Say, come on, people. I mean, we got 20 plus some. I think I actually got up over 30 women entire entirely More. came out yeah, i'm sorry if it was like two yeah. or three maybe you can argue some sort of a money grab or whatever 
way too way way too many women came out on this and i'm sorry i don't subscribe to the whole money grab board deal there I was endorse. something there where there's smoke there's fire with that i endorse everything so. dave said i don't yeah, even want to repeat it and we've had idiots in our comment section including one idiot i kicked out um that are saying what dave is saying you know, oh there's this money grab and blah 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 and i yeah. i so i don't even want to repeat it. dave said what i would say so i mean I right you know the, these women they're all very active on social media a lot of the ones who are leading well, that a couple charge. of them are i mean not yeah, nearly yeah. all of them are but yeah. they, they're definitely sincere I, I i fully believe that this was not about a money thing for them it was a about Absolutely like not, a, yeah. you know trying to get some justice and look the I hate to say it. The good news for them is the team has tried to fix it. I, I'll be sure. begrudgingly. So right. they've gotten some. It's not justice for them, but hopefully justice well, going forward. The sad thing is that yeah. justice for the fans means we get to turn a evil devil child into a multi-billionaire. Yeah, I, <laughs> you know? I, yeah unfortunately. I get, yeah. I get there. There is that bittersweet part to this, like that he right. somehow wins still. But, but, please, yeah. but please credentials for training camp. Hey, hey, you know, <laughs> new owner, new owner. We might right. get Maybe, credentialed yeah. again. Maybe. <laughs> and and now oh, on a light, like that new owner. <laughs> but now on a lighter note, though, you know, and I know that eventually somebody's going to sit there and just tell me to shut up. But it's going to be fun to do it anyway, if it can happen. All you Red Wolf fans out there, you could push for a rebrand okay, so with a new Dave owner. Asked me about this. Get, no, no, no. Get the hashtag no, no. going out there. Red Wolves or Wolves? It's not going to have a chance. Dave. It's Start not it now. <laughs> Dave asked. Dave texted us about this. Yeah. So I will explain my answer to Dave on the air. It's the world's worst and stupidest marketing decision ever to rebrand something four times. Three times in a in the span of three years. That's just crazy. <laughs> That's and yes. there are major major um, merchandising contracts you know that have to be dealt with. The Huge NFL gets a say in it. Yes. You can't you know if they were gonna put uh, you turn the team name into uh, you know Joe's Nazi sympathizers. The NFL That's a horrible would not, name. Yes, I know. That's what I'm saying. The <laughs> NFL would not agree to that. That's what I'm saying. The NFL would not agree to that. That kind of name. The NFL has a say in this. Yeah. You know, and yeah, this yes. is why, by the way, Rick Snyder is saying give up the dream about Redskins. And that's yeah. why it's never going to happen. But yeah. it's just it's it, the, it, no every professional marketing person would say you're an idiot for rebranding, constantly rebranding the thing over and over yeah. and over again. The, the NFL has a lot of say in who the next yes. owner is. They have a lot of say in any decisions. Like they have a say in and if you ever change your uniforms again. To be like, clear, my Nazi example was a example of a horrible name that they would say right. no to. Just to be abundantly yes, clear. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> we figured that out. I right. hope. If you did not figure that out, yes. come talk to me. I'll explain it to you. <laughs> okay. Rather than bothering Steve. <laughs> Thank you, because I'm busy. I'm way busier than Alex is. <laughs> uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> I, I was pretty busy today. Uh. And then I was screaming like a little girl Alex, at the top I'm of my kidding. lungs at it's one okay. point. Yes. Yeah, going. it's fine. <laughs> uh, all right. Before we get to the Colts and Vikings, we have to say, I never thought it would happen. The D.C. police actually caught one of the guys who shot Brian Robinson. I thought that this would never happen because in the half dozen times that I've ever contacted the D.C. police about anything, nothing's ever happened. They've never – a couple of times they never even showed up. So, like, this is a rarity for the D.C. police to actually catch something. Oddly enough, Congratulations. I, have, I have contacted D.C. police as well. Yeah. And one of the times they answered me, and one of the other times I didn't even pick up the phone. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah. Yeah, D.C. So, police. According to <laughs> our one of our posts, I did not see this until right before the show. Right. It, it just came out pretty, pretty Well, quick. and I saw this courtesy of our poster BTG in the comment section mm -hmm. who— copied this from somewhere i don't know where he didn't credit anybody but what he says the charge is a 17 year old who was 16 at the time of the shooting has been arrested charged with assault with intent to rob while armed with a gun so apparently that's the charge if btg's post is to be believed and have no reason to doubt him mm. so that's the charge i mean why it wouldn't be a murder charge or attempted murder charge it's been a matter of intent you know, we don't know what the facts are at all. No, Maybe no. they were wrestling for the gun and it accidentally discharged. Maybe Robinson discharged it when he hit it. I don't know. Who knows? So we'd have to see more about the facts to know why that charge. 
right. is what And of stuck. course there is there were two people there actively so uh and I, I know technically wouldn't matter but it could have been the other guy whose gun could went it, off. Well, yeah. it, well you'd rope the other one into the same charge anyway. Right right. I I realize that. But I'm just saying maybe that is part but of it. They Who caught knows? one little thug, hopefully they'll catch the other little thug. Yeah. I I'm sure I'm sure just walk down the neighborhood that kid's from, you'll find him. You know. That yeah. they tend to all like if you catch one criminal like that, they live close to the other one. This is not Walter White who can escape to Maine no. or wherever he went. No, no, these are teenagers. Bad. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The question is, what were they even gonna do with the car in the end? That's what I don't know. Drive but, it around and then leave it in an alley. I guess. Or part it out, sell the wheels to some criminal enterprise. Yeah, maybe. Uh but good for you, DC police. You actually caught somebody. Now let's see if the D.C. prosecutor can actually convict the person. Yeah, well, I, I, I get a feeling that since it's a high-profile thing, that it'll be fairly easy for them. Let's hope. Yeah. Some justice uh, for right, Brian let's... Robinson. Yes, congratulations, Brian, on, on that, I guess. Uh, all right, we should talk about the Colts game fairly quickly because uh, we've already spent our hour. Um, Pretty much. Uh, no, 40, we're at 41 minutes. We but, have time, Alex. Yeah, all right. So, Colts game. <laughs> recap. First half, snooze. Just like, you know, a week ago, <laughs> it feels like. Uh, but, man, oh, man, Taylor Heineke with a come-from-behind win. Uh, another fourth-quarter game-winning uh, drive for him. Uh, one of the riskier throws he's ever thrown to Terry McLaurin, that final catch. It's just like a, it was an underthrown 50-50 ball. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right. but a great catch by Terry. I didn't re watching the game. I I guess I'd forgotten where they were on the field. I didn't realize how far of a throw that was. It was a hell of a th I mean, again, it was underthrown. But yeah. if he'd let him about forty three yards yard or whatever, yeah. yeah, 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 which is more pretty much the edge of Taylor's range. I think we can accept that. But yeah, right around forty forty five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, good enough. They won. He he got a QB sneak with 20 seconds or 22 seconds to go. They and they win with a one point win, and they get out of there. Um, but yeah, well, I, I mean, I think it all comes down to that fourth quarter. But I, I don't know if you guys want to talk about some of the other stuff you saw. Well, first. I just think generally speaking, and I agree, we shouldn't spend too much time on this game. But I just think generally speaking, what we've seen out of Washington over the last month or so, we've kind of learned what they are. Yeah. And this Colts game proved it because the Colts suck. The great, the Packers sucked. The Colts suck. Mm -hmm. A good yeah. team, like the Eagles, would have pounded both of these teams, right? Washington just doesn't have that capability. But no. Washington is not this year is not a drag in the NFL, and so they can eke out victories against fellow lower end but not terrible teams. Mm -hmm. Um. And because that's what they've done. They did it to the Bears. They did it to the Packers. And now they've done it to the Colts. And winning three games in the NFL is not easy no matter what. So I give Washington credit for this. Would they beat good teams? No, they're not going to beat good teams. No. But I think they've shown that they're not awful. And that is – that's not – really progress compared to last year, but it's progress compared to what we saw in the first couple weeks of the season, at least. That's my Absolutely. Thought. I mean, g given that in the first half of the season, we were kind of thinking this is a three win team at one point and, you know, Ron Rivera is on his way out. Now they're back at 500, you know, like they're, they could compete for that last wild card spot. Maybe if things break right for them, but that's a long way off still, obviously. Yeah, don't, uh, I wouldn't – yeah, hold your horses on that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't don't go putting any bets down. <laughs> that's well, you sure. can, but just be ready to lose your bet. Yeah. Well, if you're, if <laughs> if you're gambling out on there, sports – Jamal's going to bet. Yeah, I'm sure Jamal's already got a bet on this. <laughs> um, Dave, your thoughts on this Yeah, game? Dave? Uh, it's – you know, the first half was whatever, you know. I just mm – -hmm. it was un, it was kind of uninspired football. It's – uh. Like, like I said in my article, you know, I haven't really been all that greatly or overly optimistic or overly inspired by this team. But that but that final drive, though, by uh, by uh, Heineke, though, was uh, was a really good drive. He had he was uh, what, like two plays prior to that. He had like the entire pocket just collapse into his face, mm -hmm. nowhere to throw the ball, nowhere. To, and he was able to. You know, navigate up through the pocket, come out. I believe it was a dump ball to Gibson or Samuel to keep the drive going. Mm -hmm. And I think I was like two plays before and everything. It's just what what Heineke brings to this offense 
is what we need because our offensive line, especially in the middle, is is bad. It's just a shame he does not have a stronger arm. And who knows where we'd be right now. But it's, it's you know, McLaurin flourishes under Heineke because he does a lot of good underneath stuff. But that, that catch at the end, I mean, Gilmore had position. He had both hands on the ball. He it's was best, dead to rights to intercept that ball. And McLaurin basically came up over top, put both his hands on the ball, and he basically said, not today. Yeah. We're not we're not losing this game, and you're not intercepting this. Get out of well, my way. Our ball. Done. So I mean, it was uh, – go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, I was going to say, the thing that uh, impressed me with the – you know, the passing game was able to at least move the ball a little, despite the fact that the running game was basically dead the whole game. The running game's game. been dead all season. I got news right. slash for you. Yeah. Oh, I, I, oh, I realized that, but it was it, really bad, I thought, last week. Is it me, or is this the one game where they utilized Curtis Samuels almost from beginning to end and used them to his fullest potential? Well, let's I was talk about that. that everywhere. So, sure. Curtis Samuel, box score-wise... Four, four for 20, four carries, 29 yards, 7.3 yards per carry. And then he had three receptions for 50 yards. So he had seven touches mm-hmm. for 79 yards. And, and he had one uh, other target that he, uh, that was incomplete. Well, four targets. Yeah, yeah. I said three. Did I say target? I meant receptions. He so, said three receptions, but I just wanted. Eight, oh, yeah. He had tar- four targets. You know, he had yeah, four yeah. targets. We can add that right. target in. That means um, something. But it, but it's also how they utilized him mm-hmm. for in interception too. He was he was constantly in the backfield in motion from yeah. left to right, slot to outside, everything. It was he was very, very active in this game. I also yeah. want to be fair though. I mean, when we're talking about yeah, it was a great drive with Heineke and he kinda both against the Colts and last week against uh the Packers, it seems like he's he had kind of a mark and something sparked him and all of a sudden he was kind of in good good Taylor mode. That interception uh, this week, just a atrocious ball. I mean, just oh, terrible. it was terrible. Yeah, a wounded yeah. duck, a horrible pass into an area you shouldn't throw in at all. Just the worst, uh, you know. And so he's he's always going to be inconsistent. Mm-hmm. In addition to the weak arm thing, yeah, he makes he throws off his his footwork is strange. He's talked about his footwork. His footwork is strange sometimes. Sometimes when the balls go haywire, it's because he's on like one foot and you mm-hmm. know bent over and. Uh, and uh, so, I mean, that's, he is what he is, man. He's I don't understand why people are so mad about him uh, sometimes because he's a backup. He's a leader. He's a spark. He's going to come in and play well for a few games. But he's, you know, is he going to the Pro Bowl? No, yeah. you know, but he's good for what Washington needs him. They didn't expect to have to have him play this year. They thought yeah. it was a Carson Wentz show. Yeah. And, and look, I, I think Taylor Heineke. We we can we should just accept this is who he is. He's, you know, a thirty through thirty second caliber starter in the NFL, but he he does have that uh, energy on the field the, that he he gets guys rallying around him. Obviously, Terry seems to love him, right? Like mm-hmm. you can tell, Terry McLaurin's way more energized with Heineke out there than he was with Wentz out there. Um. And you know that kind of intangible stuff does matter in these games. I, right. That that's not a game you win with just Carson Wentz in there with a strong arm. You know, you, you need somebody who's got a little bit of heart to Absolutely. win win a game yeah. like this. Let's do game balls real fast so we sure. can move on. So, yeah, so yeah. my I'll go first since I brought it up this time. Um, I think Terry McLaurin has to get the game ball. Six for one hundred thirteen. His hometown. Yeah. He was the spark. Clearly, obviously, he was the offensive game. And, and the defensive game ball. I'm going to go against the grain a little bit and go Cam Curl because he had a brutal hit, man. He had just mm. like the form tackle to beat all form tackles. And I just like that. And I think he's played well and he deserves some recognition. Other people had better stats probably, but I'm going with Cam Curl. Well, your well, your favorite site out there, PFF, has both him and Derek Forrest rated as a top five tandem okay, of safeties. <laughs> <laughs> and Dave uh, knows that, which is why he brought it up. Yeah, 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 <laughs> sir. <laughs> but uh, okay, if I go, guy, you know, your ball since you <laughs> brought it up. Uh, can you rephrase that, please? <laughs> Show your balls, Dave. <laughs> 
that, I'm going to go. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and go with uh, Heineke. I think he did a uh, really good job on flipping the script from the first half to the second half. I think he played a really good second half and that final drive. Like I mentioned earlier, he kept that drive alive on with his feet and so forth. So I'll give it to Heineke. And as far as uh, defense, I'm going to have to go with uh, with uh, Jamin Davis. I think we're really seeing the kind of defender he can be for us on this on this defense. And once we once you put him against a true, true middle linebacker, mm -hmm. I think the second level of the defense is going to finally potentially be very, very good for this unit. But it's not with Holcomb, in my opinion. But I have to give it to Jamin Davis. Yeah, uh, Davis, by the way, uh, along with a lot of guys on defense, stayed out every snap. Davis, Fuller, St. Juice, and Curl all played every snap on defense this week. Um, that's that's rare that you'd have that many. Uh, but, I mean, they were shorthanded, too. We, we've kind of glossed over that, the linebacker situation. They didn't re I think the next one who I see uh, ne next most staffs was uh, David Mayo. He played 33% of the game. So not a lot of linebacker depth <laughs> and linebacker play last week. Uh, I like your answer of Davis. I'm going to split the difference here. I'm going Davis on defense because uh, I agree. I think he had a very good game. And I'm going to go with Terry on offense because, like Steve said, he can't. He played up to the hype of going home for the Absolutely. first time. Yep. Um, you know, let's be honest. You hear those stories a lot, and then guys do nothing. You know, like they go to home and they have two catches for 30 yards, and that's it. And it's like, well. Glad you invited 700 friends to come watch that. You know? <laughs> but Terry delivered. He delivered in a big way, especially with that final drive. Yep. So yep. Uh, I, I think that would be my one, too. So. Uh, all right. Let's talk Vikings. Kirk Cousins, first game back in D.C. since he abandoned, you know, Washington for Minnesota, for Green, which is hard to believe it's pastures. been. Hmm. Greener, richer pastures. Uh, well, I don't know if they're greener or richer. They're frozen tundra pastures. At, you know, it is Minnesota. <laughs> True. Yeah. Not, hey, not like dome. the Long Hills of Virginia. <laughs> anyway, so, okay. So, yes, the Vikings. Now, the Vikings have a good record. There's no doubt about that. Um, they are 6-1, and one, first place, NFC North. But let's think about who they played. They got stomped by the Eagles. Everybody's got stomped by the Eagles. Mm -hmm. Packers, Lions, Saints, Bears, Dolphins, Cardinals. Can somebody name a high-quality team in that bunch? Nah. Right, they're all a bunch of fair to Midland kind of teams. Right. For the most part, in there. Uh, and if you look at the numbers that the Vikings have put up, I think the, they are a bit of a paper tiger, a little mm -hmm. bit. They haven't scored a ton of points. They, they, everybody's better than Washington, practically. But, I mean, Washington is, you know, bad on points. But point is, they're 17th, 173.17th. Washington's 26. Mm -hmm. Not a ton of rushing yards, not a ton of passing yards. Now, Kirk is Kirk in it, you know, like he always does. He kind of puts up the same numbers every year. Um, right. There's no doubt. But scoring percentage? So, I've been meaning to bring this up, and I keep forgetting. Washington remains last in the NFL in scoring percentage. What scoring percentage is percentage of drives ending in a score. Mm -hmm. This is despite them winning three games in a row. They are still 32nd and last. The Vikings are dead in the middle, 16th. This is not – and the, the team of Dalvin Cook and Justin Jefferson and all that, the offense has not really produced that much. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they scored 29 points against the Bears and 34 against the Cardinals. Um, granted, they're scoring in the high 20s each game, but I, it's, I don't think this is your daddy's Vikings. That's what I'm saying. No, I, I mean, look, uh, they, they still have a very good passing game, obviously. Uh, you know, they, they, they replaced one elite wide receiver with another, which, you know, I, I, I think we can envy a little here in Washington. Uh, you know, Justin Jefferson, because Justin Jefferson, they got for the Diggs trade, basically, right? That, Essentially. That's what, yeah. So, you know, th that's just incredible luck on their part. Um, 
but yeah, you know, looking at their stats for the year, at least nothing blows me away about the, their offensive or their win. It's a lot of close games. I know that for the most part, what, 20, 24, 20, 25, 29, 22. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You got a lot of that. Um, including against some teams, like you said, like Chicago, which I know we, it's not like we beat up on Chicago, but still. I will be fascinated to see how Kevin O'Connell does coming back to Washington. Cause remember, this is a guy who I think a lot of people after Sean McVay left, kind of wanted him to be the next Sean McVay here, be that heir apparent, and he just dipped out really quickly, it felt like. Um, I will be curious to see, because he knows a lot of these guys on the offense still. He Like, you know, he was here with Terry. I'll, I'll be interested to see how that matches up in the end with this team. David? Oh, well... Oh. When I when I quickly look at what their defense has done uh, in terms of against the pass, outside of uh, was it uh, passing touchdowns allowed? Mm-hmm. You know they're 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 the ranked in the top ten, so they don't give up a lot of passing touchdowns, but they do give up a lot of yards. You know, and they, they do give up a relatively high passer rating. Um, but I think. Uh, I think offensively, I think we have what we need to exploit where their weakest at, which is their middle linebackers or their their uh, linebacker because they do have a good, a pretty good front line, and I think Heineke can elude most of that rush. But in terms of their, but in terms of their linebackers, uh, I think between Kerr Samuels and and Gibson, I think we could exploit that. Um, and I think if they start bringing too many guys down to try to stop that. You know, it just opens up McLaurin, you know, with the uh, quick crossers and routes to open up the passing game downfield for many more 50-50 pass balls as kind of, you know, throws them. But I think there's an opportunity there against their passing game. But the only problem, they, they just don't give up a lot of touchdowns, especially in the red zone. The red zone rank is, uh, I just had that. Actually, no, I stand corrected. Their red zone, the red zone touchdown percentage allowed is ranked dead last well you know why is partly is they've got patrick peterson back there patrick mm-hmm. peterson is probably going to be end up in the hall of fame and right. as much as we all love terry mclaurin i've i'm not sure how lead he is i mean again we love him i'm not even much of a fan I, i'm a fan of terry mclaurin but a lot a series of elite corners have shut him down Sure. Darius Slay's done it two years in a row, just as an example. Patrick Peterson is another one. So I think a key to this game, to me, is how well Terry McLaurin can do against Patrick Peterson. Because yeah. Terry McLaurin, two weeks in a row, has been the, the the leader. He's been the emotional guy. He's made critical catches. He hadn't faced up against Peterson. Now, Gilmore last week was a good player. You know, the Colts, mm-hmm. Patrick Peterson's had another level. So that right. part, so I do think for that reason, I think the underneath stuff where you were alluding to Dave, the linebacker core, uh, you know, underneath crossing routes, that's what I would be doing. And I just, I don't, Washington just can't run the ball. It's as simple as that. They're just not yeah. a good running team this year. I still think Brian Robinson is going to run back, but it's just not happening. You well, know, you're not gonna, this, well, you, well, you're not going to, well, you're not going to run very far behind this line anyway. Right. This line no. can't run. I mean, this, this, I mean, this line can't pass block or run block. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's really not much you can do. That's right. So they they but. really can't. And so it's just like, just and and the Vikings are a pretty good run def, run team. That's why I really think, like you said, over the middle, and that is where Taylor Heineke can can do his magic. So I think there's yeah. a chance. Even yeah. though the Vikings are six and one, I think Washington has a chance in this game. Yeah, but it's like you said, uh, six and one really isn't like. I mean, it's not like the Eagles seven. No, the Eagles are a pretty legit seven and no team. That's my point. That's you my know, point. So it's yeah, yeah, yeah. I, and for the record, like uh, Robinson and Gibson are averaging three point two and three point seven yards per carry this season, respectively. Right. Gibson is making a bigger impact in the passing game, which helps yeah. at least somewhat. Twenty nine receptions. Yeah. I mean that he almost has as many receiving yards as he does rushing yards. So oh, yes. So, you know, like that, that does help uh, mitigate some of the problems in the run game, but uh, it's not the same thing, of course. You know, screen passes, right. 
or uh, you know, flat passes, whatever they are. Um, yeah, I, you know, I, I think the run game's going to struggle again for sure. I mean, it's just going to struggle all year. What else can we expect? Uh, the one thing that you mentioned, they got to work on that intermediate stuff. How is it that we've seen almost no production from these tight ends? I, I know Logan Thomas is hurt, but these guys, the guys behind them were getting hyped up and nothing. Well, that's you just said it. Logan yeah. Thomas is hurt. Who's hyping the tight ends up? A bunch of fans. Yeah. Yeah. The, the truth I, I is that. those tight ends are either average or young guys. Yeah. Cole Turner's and, only been healthy for like a game and a half, oh, I think, anyway. Of, and by the way, tight ends. Sorry, Dad, I didn't mean to interrupt you. But before I forget, <laughs> TJ Hawkinson got traded to the Vikings yesterday, Tuesday. So remember who he is, folks. Yeah, Number yeah. one, you know, first round draft pick, elite athletic talent. What happens with Washington tight ends is typically not good. So I think that instantly becomes a serious problem. But I didn't mean to interrupt you, Dave. I apologize. Well, I mean, we did we we did pretty effective against him on uh you know week two, but then again, I'm on I'm on around say Brown was kind of taking all the focus right there with DeAndre <laughs> Swift. So. <laughs> and who does the, who do the Vikings have here? The Vikings have got Justin Jefferson. He's yeah. that yep. dude is balling. And don't forget about Adam Thielen, who was tearing the NFL up. You know, and the he's not so much this year, but uh, you know. I mean, Justin Jefferson, 752 yards already. Yeah. Yeah, he's got 200 yards more than Terry McLaurin. Crazy. Yeah. And everyone talks about Cook, rightfully so, but you can't forget about Alexander Madison, their backup running back. He could start for over half the NFL. And and, and, teams. Yeah, and Cook this year, for those wondering, averaging 4.9 yards per, per rush, 561 yards, 17 receptions, 110 yards. Yeah. I really will be curious to see who they put on Justin Jefferson to try and cover him. Honestly, it's got to be St. Juice. I, I would think so. Um, you know, because the only the only reason I might want to say Fuller is, he you know he's got a little more veteran experience at least. I know it's not uh, Washington a whole does lot. tends to not travel with receivers anyway. Yeah, though. I know it may just not be. I think the fun matchup to watch Washington's new number one corner is St. Juice to me. Yeah. my view. It's not and, wild goose yet. <laughs> not not quite yet. No. Not yet. Uh, so to me, that's the interesting matchup to watch. At least is St. Juice versus Jefferson. I actually think that Del Rio is probably going to not put as much attention on Jefferson, and he might get a couple of big plays. I think I think he's going to try to really force Kirk in that offense and a lot of third and longs. I could see uh, Jamin Davis being put in a lot of blitz packages where they bring in five instead of just a four man rush. Mm. You know, I can I got I, I can see uh I can see John and Davis being very, very active in this game and trying to get the Kirk Cousins because we all know once you rattle Kirk Cousins enough, I mean he's he, I mean he's gonna throw he's gonna throw an interception or two. And one of them may end up being a pick six. This is I think Del Rio, and I think Del Rio is gonna try to force one of those big interceptions because we're gonna need a defensive score in this game, I think. These are some more stats I want to throw out there real quick, but I know we're getting run out of time. A blitz percentage, Washington 24.3, meaning they're blitzing on 24.3% of the opportunities. That's almost dead in the middle. Mm-hmm. Hurry percentage, how many times have they hurried a quarterback? Really bad at this. Mm-hmm. Uh, 3.8, which is uh, 28th. But the overall pressure percentage, 24th in the NFL. Why is that? Because they're first in the NFL in knockdowns, quarterback knockdown percentage, and by raw numbers both. So yeah. they're getting to the quarterback a lot, Washington is, and it's not because of blitzing, because uh, they're not blitzing a ton. Why is that, you ask? Well, that is because Jonathan Allen is acting like an all-pro in the middle. Yeah. That's so why. So is Ron Payne. Ron Payne. And Ron yeah, Payne. Ron Payne. Really well. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> Well, you know, I know we're, we're way out of time. Uh, uh, are you guys happy that they didn't trade Payne for anything? If because uh, odds are they're not resigning him, right? Like just statistically speaking, it's. I mean, unlikely. I wrote a post about how they could. A yeah, couple I know. Years I know. Ago. Well, actually, before you answer that, Steve, do okay. you think with them, with them moving on from Jackson, saving up the money they are, maybe it gives them a little more flexibility to give Payne at least a three-year contract to try to do something. And, you know, right now, because you can let Carson Wentz go, you save all that money, 
and you 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 maybe extend Heineke. Nobody wants to hear that. I get that. You extend Heineke and then you draft the quarterback next year. He'll be on real cheap. So now you have your quarterback situation will be real cheap. You're not paying a high price corner anymore. Maybe you can invest a three year contract with Deron Payne. Would that make any sense or no? Well, yeah. Um, look, Washington is not in a bad cap space. They didn't need to do all that to sign Payne. So mm-hmm. it, it's not really a matter of can they do it now that they have right. all this. They they could have in the first place. It would have taken some doing and somebody smart like me to figure it out, uh, you know, to structure it in a creative way. I don't mean that to be arrogant, but like somebody yeah, who fine. does this like I do. You know, oh, yeah, you go for a living. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, could figure it out. So I, they could. But mm-hmm. I just think I think they're going to let him go. I think Ron Rivera drafted Phil Mathis for a reason. And that was to be the new Deron Payne. And, yeah. uh, you know, I don't know why they need both. I, I personally, if it were me, I would keep paying. But I don't think they are. Well, look, I, I and I, I was kind of glancing over this over at uh, Spotrack the other day. The number of teams that have like you, you can only have so many big name co- or big money contracts. Right. And when I was glancing at Spotrack, I think the most I saw with teams with, you know, I was saying anything over $10 million a year to a guy. Six, you can maybe keep six of those guys on your roster. Uh, most that's, teams don't even keep that's that a many. Lot. That's a yeah. lot. Yeah. yeah, six was like the Rams and a few others. Um, I, I just, if you're going to do six, you can't keep multiple guys on the, you can't make it for De- Dean Lyman. You know, like it just doesn't make sense. I just think it's point. kind of a waste. Why are you spending all these first round draft picks on defensive tackles if you're not gonna keep, yeah, keep I them i mean that's crazy and we but, didn't even mention by the way chase young will be back this week oh yeah yeah like. he practiced today yeah. uh, who knows if he's going to be effective and how much he's going to play but i mean he's apparently going to be out there well so he's practicing they have that 21 day window to yeah. say if he'll play or not now speaking of so the injury report for wednesday the yep. dnps were Jahan dotson cole hokum david mayo jd mckissick um Cole commits the foot, Mayo hamstring, McKissick neck, and Dotson, of course, is the hamstring. Mm -hmm. And for the Vikings, safety Cam Bynum, Jalen Naylor, and Dalvin Tomlinson uh, were the DNPs. And for the record, Adam Thielen is on this list, but he was a full practice. (laughs) So that's injuries. Yep. Uh, All right. Uh, Anything else we want to touch on? I think we hit everything. Well, we got to predict. All right. Uh, all right. Predictions for the blackout game, because uh, just to remind you guys, it's their stupid blackout game. So it's the Steelers the, for the yeah. Steelers Vikings game. Right. Yes. And they want all the fans to wear black. So it's going to be a very purple and black crowd. I'll go first since I, I, you always let me off the hook, Alex. All right. Um, I think the Vikings are going to win a fairly close game. I think the Vikings games. Most of them this season have been fairly close because their defense isn't that great. Washington can't just – their offense just can't score points. They just mm. suck. So um, I think it's going to be something along the lines of like 24-17 Vikings. Yeah, it's about what I'm thinking too. Uh, I'll go next. We'll let Dave go last. Uh, like I just said, it's kind of where I'm at as well. Just to be different, I'll say – 20 to 17 you know let's just have some slightly different numbers to make it fun <laughs> thought you were going to uh, say a 42 to 38 shootout <laughs> <laughs> no no it was not uh and, and i think it's going to be mostly purple in the crowd not black so oh uh, absolutely it, you know the I, I think this whole blackout thing just like the whole uh what was it they did the last home game the homecoming it's it's just embarrassing you know what do you expect, though? Oh, not know, you, but what do they expect? Yeah, they expect seriously. they they think it's magically going to be fixed. That's what they think, right? Yeah. Well, I'm going to be the optimist here. Uh oh. Okay. I think I think we force Kirk Cousins into a uh, turnover situation. I think the defense gets a score, and I think uh, we want to pull out a win, 28 to 25 in this game. Whoa, high scoring win too. Wow, yes, that's, I think that is optimism, Dave. It's optimism, but it's just it's just kind of a gut feel because I mean their 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 pass defense is not very good. I know you mentioned Patrick Peterson, but Gilmore has been a, a much higher rated corner this whole entire year than what Patrick Peterson has been this year. You know, mm-hmm. Gilmore has been one of the top four or five corners, and he still did well against him. 
but uh but I just I just think this offense is going to be able to keep the keep drive sustained against what they have in that middle of that defense. They don't have much there. And I think Gibson and Samuels are going to be utilized in this game. Now, granted, Scott Turner may throw a monkey wrench in this whole thing and decide to be Scott Turner and then not do what he should do with these guys. And then we'll have a very whatever offense, but uh-huh. I'll be optimistic here. All 28, right. 25. All right. You heard it here uh, first. Yep. Hopefully oh, everybody and, uh, had a happy Halloween, by the way. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, it rained here, so we had no trick-or-treat. I was going to dress up for yeah. Dan. Yeah, it Dan rained Dan up Snyder. here, too. I was going to dress up as Dan Snyder for Halloween this year and really scare the little bejesus <laughs> out of the kids. I was, I'm was i too tall, though. That's the problem. All right, you'd have to do the thing where you put shoes on your knees and, like, Yeah, I know. Walk. That's yeah. yeah. And I'm not even tall, but I'm way taller than that dude. <laughs> I'm five six, and I still feel like I'm taller than he is. You would tower over him. Yeah, <laughs> you at least got an inch or two on him, I think. Yeah, I don't, probably. Yeah, we don't know what his official height is, but you probably got it. Can you, you can imagine somebody him. showing up at your door or going to the Halloween party and <laughs> trick or treat? Ah, yeah. little little troll in glasses. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> got police credentials for training camp. Yeah, yeah. Oh, don't worry. The new owner will. Yeah. The, the new owner will. Hey, hey, if I like the new owner, you know. Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, I'll do whatever we need to do. <laughs> and will I? And to answer Dave's question on text, will I become a fan again if the team is sold? The Redskins are dead to me. I enjoy analyzing football, but the right. Redskins are gone. It's as simple as that. Now, what they name it? The Warriors. Just no, the Redskins are gone. they change it to go Warriors. The Redskins are gone. All right. It's Redskins. It would certainly help. Don't oh, get yeah. me wrong, you know, right. but it's, I just can't, it's, you know, once you break up with the girlfriend and it's, it's just over, don't go back to her. Yeah. You know? I just Move want on. this commander's name to go away. That's it's all. terrible. I, I, yes. We all want it to go away. Oh, oh, but we have the <laughs> XFL left hand back up, and right? the DC defenders. So I, I got that going for, for me locally. Yeah. You can, you can root for the Houston roughnecks, Steve, in the XFL. <laughs> For, I'm down for to the, the Dodgers six games until they fall apart. I got mad at the Lakers too. Yeah. I don't root for the Lakers anymore either. Cause I got tired of the NFL, NBA's woke nonsense right. and I just can't stand LeBron James. And so I'm not, I don't even, so I'm down to just the Dodgers. It's sad. And the Dodgers we, we need to get you into like hockey or something. I know? have tried. I tried to watch the saints. They didn't do it for me. I've been kind of liking the Ravens. Ravens are a fun team. Yeah, I kind of enjoy watching the Ravens. And a friend of mine is a Ravens fan. He's always texting me. He hates LeBron Jackson with a passion, and I think it's hilarious. So that entertains me. Why does he hate him with it? Well, he thinks he sucks, basically. And, and you're now that the Lamar Ravens guy. have a linebacker, we should trade it for in Roquan Smith. Yeah, 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 yeah. So anyway, I get entertainment yeah. value out of his rantings you know, right. about how he hates Lamar Jackson, which is funny. So the Ravens, I've kind of leaning Ravens, but not for any reason. The Texans, nobody, even the people at Houston don't like the Texans anymore. Right, right. <laughs> that might be one of the few games where uh, the turnout's lower than <laughs> <laughs> than a Washington game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ooh, that is going to be a rough one. All right, guys, let's wrap this up and say goodnight. All right. Good night. Have a good one, fellas. Yeah. All right.